So what exactly is a shunt? Well, a shunt is used to measure current. For example, the amp meter on the front of my power supply uses a shunt to measure the output current from the power supply. So in a nutshell, a shunt is just used for measuring current. But what does a shunt look like exactly? Well, for example, this is an axial style shunt. And this is a high current shunt rated to handle up to 50 amps. And this rather ordinary looking wire jumper on the circuit board is also a shunt. So shunts come in a wide range of varieties. So what exactly defines as a shunt then? Well, in a nutshell, a shunt is nothing more than a conductor which has some value of resistance, typically in the milliohm range. Basically, any conductor such as an ordinary resistor, this wire rod, or a length of copper wire could be made into an improvised shunt, provided it has some resistance, and we know the value of said resistance. A typical multimeter is useful for measuring the resistance of components down to say 1 ohm, however they are unsuitable for measuring the incredibly low resistance of the shunt for example. You can see my meter reads all zeros while measuring the resistance of both shunts. Now although the resistance is incredibly low, it is there and that's what makes a shunt useful. So basically a shunt is a low value resistor. Ok great, but how does a shunt help us measure current? Well that's a great question and weirdly to measure current with a shunt we actually measure voltage. Let me explain. Have you ever found yourself situated in a paddock full of cows and need to order circuit boards? Yeah me neither, but if I did I would use this video's sponsor JLC PCB. Five circuit boards cost as little as two dollars. They offer fast production time and with a multitude of design options you're only limited by your imagination. Ordering is as simple as going to jlcpcb.com, uploading your Gerber files, and choosing your design preferences. You can also choose any colour solder mask at no additional cost. And if you're new to designing circuit boards, then check out my KiCad circuit board series to get you started. Look, look Daisy, free circuit boards. So using my whiteboard, I'll draw a shunt with a value of 1 ohm. Next I'll add a 1 amp load over here. And lastly we have a power supply. The power supply voltage is irrelevant for the purposes of calculating current. It could be 10 volts or 100 volts or any other random number, it really doesn't matter. We don't use the supply voltage in any way to calculate the current. Ok, so I've drawn this diagram with the shunt connected to the positive rail. But the exact same setup could be used on the negative or ground rail, it really doesn't matter. Now remember, a shunt is basically a resistor, and when current passes through a resistor, there is a voltage drop across the resistor. So if we attach our multimeter leads on each side of the shunt, we will be able to measure the voltage drop across the shunt when current is flowing. With a 1 amp load, the multimeter will read a voltage drop across the shunt of 1 volt. This voltage drop is directly proportional to the amount of current passing through the shunt. So at 1 amp of current, we have a 1 volt drop, now if we increase the load to 5 amps, the voltage drop will also increase to 5 volts. In this example I have deliberately used round numbers to keep the math simple, but what if we don't have a precision 1 ohm shunt? Maybe our shunt has a random value, so let's give our shunt a new value. 0.867 ohms looks pretty random to me, and our multimeter is reading 1.19 volt drop across the shunt. Now in this new scenario we have a load, but we don't know how much current it's drawing. However, we do know the value of the shunt, and the voltage drop across it. From these two numbers, we can calculate the current draw from the load. So how do we do that? Well, get ready for two hours of hardcore math! No, I'm just kidding. Someone made a calculator to do all the work for us. If you watched my last video on Ohm's Law, you probably saw this one coming. If you aren't familiar with Ohm's Law, then go watch that video, then come back to this video. Ok, so I'll enter my shunt's resistance, which was 0 0.867 ohms, and the voltage drop across the shunt, which is 1.19 volts. Press calculate, and now we know the current draw is 1.37 amps. And that's how a shunt is used to measure current. So now you know how to calculate the current from any value of shunt using this method. Pretty cool, eh? Ok, time to put theory into practice with a demonstration. I'll use this 10 milliohm shunt and this 12 volt bulb will act as my load. The shunt is connected between the power supply and load. I'll then attach my multimeter leads across the shunt to measure the voltage drop just as I showed in my whiteboard drawing. 
I'll blank out the ammeter on my power supply so there's no cheating here. Alright, time to fire it up. Okay, so my multimeter is reading 42 millivolt drop across the shunt. It's time for Ohm's Law. Um, okay, let's go back to Ohm's Law calculator to work out the current. I'll enter my shunt's value of 10 milliohms and the voltage drop was 42 millivolts. Press calculate and that works out to be 4.2 amps of current. Now if I uncover the amp meter on my power supply it reads 4.3 amps. Now you might be wondering why my calculation was 100 milliamps less than the amp meter displays. That's down to a couple of factors. For instance the shunt I'm using has a tolerance range of plus or minus 1%. And even though my Bryman meter is a fantastic meter, measuring down in the sub millivolt range with pinpoint precision is not what this meter is intended to be used for. So we'll have to forgive this 2.3% error margin. Okay, so now you know what a shunt is and also how to use one. So let's move on to making our own DIY shunt. And a good place to start would be to use a common resistor with a low value like this 10 ohm resistor. So after replacing the commercial shunt with my 10 ohm resistor, it's time to test. Oh, well that didn't last long. If we freeze the video, we can see the voltage drop was over 11 volts across our 10 ohm shunt. That equates to over 13 watts of power to dissipate, more than 24 times what the resistor is rated to handle. Hmm, okay, well how about we use this beefy 100 watt 8 ohm power resistor. I'll replace the puny burnt out resistor with my power resistor and retest. Hmm, something's not right here. The bulb is barely glowing and the current draw should be more than 4 amps. And to top it off, the resistor is getting really hot. So what's going on here? Well, the issue is the 8 ohm resistor has too much resistance to allow the circuit to function as normal. There is a 10 point volt drop across the resistor. If we do the math, that is more than 14 watts of power being wasted as heat. That leaves less than 1.5 volts to power the bulb, so that's why it's barely glowing. If I switch back to the 10 milliohm shunt I used earlier, not only does the bulb run as normal, but the shunt isn't hot at all. In fact, I can hold my fingers around it. In this setup, only 0.17 watts is converted to heat, compared to my 8 ohm resistor at a whopping 14 watts in exactly the same setup. So our 8 ohm power resistor shunt isn't practical to use. We need something with much lower resistance. Something around 10 milliohms would be a good place to start. I have a spool of 1.25mm enamelled copper wire I could use to make a shunt. I'll use this handy wire resistor calculator on commandy.com. I need to know the resistance per metre, so I'll enter in 1 metre for length and the wire diameter which is 1.25mm, and that calculates to be 13 milliohms per metre. So in theory I'd only need around 770mm length of wire to achieve a 10 milliohm resistance. So I'll cut a length slightly longer than I need to allow a margin for fine tuning. I placed a piece of masking tape slightly lower than the theoretical length I need and proceeded to sand off the enamel insulation up to the masking tape. The reason will become clear in a moment. The question is how do we precisely measure the correct length of wire to achieve a value of 10 milliohms? Well I can't use my multimeter because it lacks the resolution to accurately measure 10 milliohms but it can measure millivolts with a reasonable degree of accuracy. So here is the method. First I need to run a precise amount of current through the wire. So I'll set up my power supply to limit the current to 1 amp. Now I could connect the wire across the output of my power supply, but the only problem with that is the wire is basically a dead short and the voltage is almost zero. This means controlling the current with a reasonable degree of accuracy is difficult. To get around this issue, I'll connect my 8 ohm power resistor in series with my copper wire, then reconnect the power supply. Now the voltage is around 8 volts and the current is fairly stable. I'll set my multimeter to read volts and connect the negative probe to one end of my copper wire. Now I can slide the other probe along the copper wire until my meter reads 10 millivolts, which is right here. I'll mark that spot with a marker and then cut the wire at the mark. Now in theory this length of copper wire should have a resistance of 10 milliohms. And if you're wondering how I calculated that, well of course it was Ohm's law. To prevent shorts where the enamel has been removed, I used a piece of heat shrink to insulate the wire. So now we have a calibrated length of wire we can use as a shunt. 
However it's a bit bulky to use in its current form, so I wrapped the wire around a pipe to make it smaller and used a couple of cable ties to retain its shape. Now the only danger in doing this is we have inadvertently made an inductor, which depending on your application can be very undesirable. So I straightened the wire out and found the midpoint of the wire. I then bent the wire back on itself like this. Then I can once again wrap the wire around a pipe like this to make a coil. Now because we folded the wire back on itself, half the wire is wrapped in a clockwise direction while the other half is counterclockwise. This creates two equal and opposite magnetic fields that cancel each other out, resulting in no inductance. Pretty cool, eh? So how does our DIY 10 milliohm shunt compare to its commercial counterpart? Well, let's go back to our test setup with the light bulb. Just like before, the shunt is connected in series with the load on the positive rail, and my multimeter will be measuring the voltage drop across our DIY shunt. Okay, let's fire it up. So according to the meter, the current passing through our DIY shunt is 4.7 amps, which is around 400 milliamps higher than reality. That works out to be an error margin of 8.8%. Considering that we didn't use any special or expensive equipment to make our DIY shunt, I think that is pretty reasonable. However, if we take into account that commercial shunts are more compact, offer a higher degree of precision, and in most cases are relatively cheap, I think I'll stick to buying my shunts. So if you found this video useful, please give it a like. It would be much appreciated. It helps out massively. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them down in the comments section below. Thank you very much to my supporters on Patreon. You guys rock. You help make content like this video possible. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.